Okay, now that we've looked at how we put together financial statements, week two, we're going to look at recording transactions. So our learning objectives in this video, state the basic accounting equation and its relationship with the balance sheet, and then begin to analyze what are business transactions and how do they affect the basic accounting equation and end up on the financial statements. Remember we said that assets is what a business owns. These are things of value owned by the business. Trucks, buildings, equipment, or other economic resources of the business. Now the equities of a business are all the claims. They are people outside the business, which we call liabilities, and people inside the business which we uh, refer to as shareholder or stockholders equity. So the basic balance sheet equation, when you follow this example, assume you purchase new automobile for 15000 by investing 10 in your own money and borrowed 5 from the bank. Your equity in the automobile is 10000 The bank's equity is 5. You can either further describe that 5000 as a liability. So assets equal equity. If you're a corporation, you describe the 10,000 equity as a shareholder's equity or interest in the asset. So the balance sheet equation, assets on one side of the equal sign equal liability plus shareholder's equity. That's called the accounting equation. Now an accounting transaction is a business activity or a financial event that causes a change in the accounting equation. That is, every transaction affects assets or liabilities or shareholders' equity or two or three of them at the same time. Because every transaction is basically an exchange. For example, an exchange of cash for merchandise is a transaction. The exchange takes place at an agreed price and provides objective measurement of the activity. For example, exchange might be 5,000. These two factors are in play, evidence and measurement. The exchange makes possible the recording. Merely placing an order for goods is not a transaction. So a transaction is something that has had to happen and there has been an exchange. Now we're going to look at expanding that accounting equation. We have the assets, that's uh, straightforward, liabilities, but the shareholders' equity section is something different, of course. This um, is the investment that the shareholders have put into the business. It's, we call that common stock. Now, when the business earns money, it earns revenue by providing a product or service, and it has to pay expenses. That, that is rent and salaries and so on in order to earn that revenue. This together, of course, is the net income and that belongs to the shareholders and retain earnings. When, recall, the corporation pays back the shareholders, it pays them in the form of dividends, so that reduces retained earnings. So you see, revenue increases retained earnings, expenses decrease retained earnings, and so do dividends. So we're going to look at how Accounting transactions affect the balance sheet equation. Uh, we have basically five types of accounts. Asset accounts, liability accounts, common stock when they put money in business, when the business earns revenue, and when the business pays expenses. So each transaction would be something in one of those. Now, keep in mind, this is a dual accounting system. So every transaction affects two accounts. But it affects these accounts in such a way that the balance sheet equation is always in balance. Okay, to begin with, let's assume we're Vincent Corporation and we start business on March 1st. And we start by the investors, the owners of the company, putting $10,000 into the company. That is, they put $10,000 into the bank account of the company and the company issues them $10,000 worth of common shares. Well, again, two, trans uh, two accounts are affected by this transaction. 
first of all, cash, and secondly, common stock. Now, what happens? Well, cash had a zero balance. It now has a $10,000 balance. It went up, obviously. Common stock, which was also zero, all these accounts were zero to begin with. Now, because they've issued common stock, it too went up. Now, notice an increase on the asset side of the equation of 10000 and an increase on the liabilities and shareholders' equity side of the equation. So we are still in balance by recording this transaction. Next, the company on March 1st borrowed 5000 from the bank by signing the notes payable. So again, two accounts, cash and notes payable. Cash now went up because I borrowed 5000 from the bank. I have it now in my bank account. So cash goes up 5000 But liabilities, I now owe the bank. $5,000. So my liabilities have increased by $5,000. And again, you'll notice $5,000 on one side, assets, plus $5,000 on the other side. The liabilities were still in balance. Now on March 2nd, Vincent purchased equipment by paying $5,000 in cash. Alright, two accounts are affected. Equipment which we purchased, and cash. Now, in this case, cash goes down 5000 so we show that as a negative. But equipment goes up from 0 to a plus 5000 So here we have a negative 5 and a plus 5, both on this side of the balance sheet or uh, accounting equation. So again, you see, if I was to total all of this, it would still be in balance. On March 2nd, we received a 1200 advance from a client. Now, sometimes a customer will pay us before we have done the job. And when we do that, we accept their money. We call that unearned revenue. I have not earned the revenue. Unearned revenue is a liability. If I accept the money, I now have a liability to perform the service. And that's what is happening here. So to record that, the other transaction is cash. So cash goes up $1,200. That's okay. And unearned service revenue goes also up $1,200. $1,200 on this side of the balance sheet, $1,200 or the accounting equation, 1200 on the other. So again, you see we're always in balance. We're recording these transactions in two places in such that we always remain in balance. On March 3rd, we received 10,000 cash from a customer because we perform services. Now, when we perform services, we earn revenue. That's what we're in business for. Okay, and in this case, we got cash. So cash, and over here, revenue. Now, cash went up 10000 Over here, revenue also. Revenue always goes up. So it would be 10000 And again, we have plus 10 and plus 10. So every time we perform a service or sell a product for a customer, they have earned revenue. Now, they either receive cash or the customer will pay later, which we call an accounts receivable. Now we're going to pay an expense. March 3rd, we paid the office rent for the month, $900. So again, cash goes down $900. Revenue, uh, I'm sorry, expenses actually go up, but because they reduce retained earnings, we're going to make that a negative too. So we have a negative on one side, the asset side, we have a negative on the shareholder's equity side. Every expense is the same. Uh, I incur it, I recognize the expense, and I either pay it with cash or I have to pay it later, which would be an accounts payable. Now on March 4th, Vincent paid 600 for a one-year insurance policy that will expire 
next year. Oh, that shouldn't be September. That should be February. Okay. Now, because they do that, you see, what we're doing is we're purchasing protection for a whole year. So that is an asset. And we call that a prepaid asset or prepaid insurance in this case. So prepaid insurance goes up because I have the asset and my cash goes down. Okay. So anytime I pay in advance for services, that's an asset. Now we purchase supplies, which is an asset, on account, which is a liability. So therefore we look and we say, okay, the two accounts, supplies was zero, it's now gone up by 2,500. And accounts payable now has also gone up by 2,500. So we have an increase on one side of the equal sign and an equal increase on the other side. Now this uh, is a situation where we're going to pay a dividend to our shareholders, a $500 dividend. Again, cash and dividend. So cash goes down by 500 and dividend actually goes up, but because it's a reduction of retained earnings, we're going to put it as a negative. And lastly, we pay the employees 4000 in salaries. Now they work for us. We pay them. We pay them in cash. And salaries is an expense. So my cash goes down, 4000 and my expense goes up, but because it's a reduction in retained earnings, it's two as a negative 4000 Now we've completed them all. So here we have the asset cash. It increased 10, 5, went down 5, up 12, up 10, down 9, down 6, down 5, down 4. The balance is 15200 Supplies, 2500 Prepaid insurance, equipment, okay, those together equal 23,300. On this side of the equal sign, we have 5,000 notes payable, 25, 1,200. Common stock, uh, plus 10 for re revenue, 49 for expenses, and 500 for dividend. Now these are subtracted. So you add this, plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this, minus this, minus this, and you see we're in complete balance. So we have recorded 11 business transactions. We record each transaction in two different places. And the way in which we record it affects the accounting equation of assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. But, if we recorded it properly, the transaction will never disrupt the accounting uh, equation. It will always be equal. Now, you have to know how these uh, journal entries work, and we will practice them. Because, thankfully, they begin to repeat themselves. We're going to pay the salaries again. We're going to pay the rent again. We're going to receive revenue for performing services, we're going to buy equipment and supplies. So you see, we have to get to know these and understand how they affect the balance sheet equation. And that's that. We will go on now and do some more problems.